It is Podcastlo. Ooh, I'm a little stinky. Gross. <laughs> Thank goodness this isn't that sort of medium, a 5D sort of experience, or 4D, 4D rather. smell a vision Now, Julian, I can already tell this whole episode is going to be screwy. One, because you <coughs> stink like hell. Second, because this is not a can, it is a twist top. You I'm don't like tradition. twist tops? Well, no, it's my thing to... But overall, the but, twist top is a better drinking experience. Yes, I don't mind this, but I wish I had a can to pop it in the microphone as is wah, wah. tradition. Wah, wah, wah. But let's give this a try. Oh, good start so far. That's pretty unconventional. I'm an unconventional guy. If what you like, if you blindfolded someone and then asked them to guess what that sound was, I don't think they'd be able to do it. And that'd be difficult. <clears throat> Could you guess what that was, viewer? Enter your guess into the comments, and if you get it, um, we'll uh, send you money or something. Damn. What is happening? You should have been quicker with that. That got really sad really quick. <laughs> you got further away Be from fine. the mic and started talking mm-hmm. slower. Really great for energy when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I do need that Celsius. <clears throat> yeah. Are you falling asleep right now? Um, no. I feel very awake and alert. Good. So the opposite of last week, because last week you were last like, week I'm was rough. <laughs> <laughs> like was uh, last week was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't freaking talk this week. I'm too energized. Uh, my mouth great. won't keep up with my thoughts. My mouth can't keep up with my brain. With my brain. Now, Julian, I have a question for you. Yes, I am gay. And you're a nicotine <laughs> user, correct? Yes. Loud and proud, baby. I'm actually going to try to quit, I think. Really? Soon. Pretty soon, yeah. I bought this one, and then I bought one more. Quit vaping or nicotine altogether? Quit nicotine, because I don't really want to do nicotine... I don't know. Pouches? I don't want to do pouches. I only really enjoy smoking stuff. Now, this is why I bring this up, Julian, because I did something kind of out of character for me. I was at Walgreens the other day. And I saw behind the counter that they had Zins for sale. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd never done a Zin. And I started thinking. Okay, am I going to out you if I say something possibly incriminating? Well, yeah, by definition. <laughs> 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 but give it a try. You can edit it I out, I guess, if you're not control. okay with it. Go ahead. So the first time I ever did dip actually was with you oh, at was Jared's really? house when we were like 18 <laughs> and I got so sick. <laughs> I do remember that. I think they were Jared's A hundred percent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were like snooze though. They had mm-hmm. tobacco in them. Yeah. But anyways, so I was at Walgreens last week, saw the Zin. Mm-hmm. I'd just seen a thing about how like to- or, uh, nicotine increases focus. Mm-hmm. I was like, God, I need some more of that. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I decided to give it a try. Did no, it says leave in your mouth for five minutes up to an hour. So I was like, first experience, I'm gonna try five minutes. Did it for five minutes. Um, felt a slight rush, slight buzz. Felt fine. It was really nothing. All was right. it nice? I was kind of like, oh. it was. Uh, yeah, it was, did not make any impact. The next day, I decided to push the boundary a little bit further and did 15 minutes. And believe me when I tell you, that was way too you long. Were I got I got zooted. I got <laughs> super nauseous. I just laid on the couch for like an hour, trying to regain my composure. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna do it again. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna throw that. I don't really like. I, it was a total whim. Yeah, I think if you're taking nicotine just for the sole purpose of increasing your focus, there's like other things there's you other can things do to instead. Do. But uh, I mean, also kind of like it'd been a while since I had like you a wanted nick, a, a nick bit buzz. Of a buzz. I wanted a little bit of a you nick want a buzz. Bit of a buzz? And I thought I'd be able to tolerate it, all right? Because I like not that I do this often, but every once in a while we'll like smoke a cigar, a part of a sure. cigar. Sure. Yeah, but cigars are different because you really you just inhale. get. Yeah, you get it you get like the nicotine kind of just like into your blood through like your gums and your mouth. Like it doesn't really, you well, don't inhale it is. fully. Yeah. But the Zen, it's like going directly into your bloodstream, like super quickly, like a cigar, like you take a puff, 
you wait for like a couple minutes, you take another puff. Uh, unless you like are used to smoking cigars, and then you kind of like chief them down. Well, there have sure, been times but... I've smoked cigars and got <clears throat> violently ill from the cigar. Oh, 100 percent. Which I think happens. I think one. I've gotten six smoking cigars every time, except for <laughs> yeah. when I was in Mexico smoking actual Cubans. Mm. Then it was like, okay, this just feels fucking great. Like the only time I actually got like really, really sick from a cigar was in Mexico, and it was because it was a fake Cuban. Oh, really? That I bought from some I mean, witch it, on the street. We we went to a cigar store, but like it was probably still not a real Cuban. But who knows? I mean, it could have been. It could have been a real Cuban. No, I just immediately had... <clears throat> no, you probably had a real one if you went to the store. This yeah. was some, like I said, witch of a woman selling them out of a cart on the street yeah. for like $5. <laughs> That's not a Cuban, my friend. No. Um, I should have known better. <clears throat> it was filled with chemicals that I had a violent allergic reaction to. But those chemicals are also in Zin pouches probably, so... No, I don't not think Not really, because they don't are. have tobacco. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, a bunch of my homies that do Zins, they're just like, well, there's no actual tobacco. It's like just nicotine, so it's not actually harmful. But it's like, there's got to be some chemical in there that we just don't know about that's yet my, that's gonna give I us know. fucking instant brain cancer. No one knows the long term effects of this And shit. like, I have homies that do the Zen thing where they'll have like two or three in for like an entire day. That's so crazy. I have a homie <laughs> who like, he says that he regularly falls asleep with them in his <laughs> mouth and then he'll wake up Dude. at like 2am. He'll like put Zins in and then smoke a cigarette. Like, people are animals with those fucking things. You are complete and, like, animals. Some people just have them in all day, every day, and it's just like they're constantly buzzing off the nicotine. Mm -hmm. The thing that's nice about the vape for me is like you still kind of have to work for it a little bit. Like if I want to get a buzz from this, I have to like rip it a few times. And obviously, I have to be like, somewhere where you can vape. Yeah, there's several situations in which I can't just pull this out and rip it as mm -hmm. much as I want to. Um, so yeah, I think the vape is a good medium for me personally, and the mouth shit's just always weird. Like I can't picture a scenario in which I start doing pouches and then my jaw doesn't like fall off in 10 years not like this is any better it's well, just a different kind of they say because the jaw falling off is from cancer and nicotine by itself is not cancer causing sure but what but again yeah no one knows the long term effects. it's like I nicotine think... in a little pouch of silicone that's like mm, that can't be no, good it can't be good for you and <clears throat> i think it is documented that if you do them too much it causes gum recession mm-hmm um, but the only like if actual if you have anything packed into your gum, it's gonna cause gum probably recession. Probably ir irritates it. Um, the only like printed warning they have on this in is just that nicotine is an addictive chemical. Chemical. Which um, sure is a great one though. I'd be. I don't. I have an addictive personality when it comes to certain things, but like, thankfully, m maybe this will change. Uh, substances. I just. I don't really. Unless we're talking Celsius or sugar. I'm addicted to those two things. But other substances I don't, like, have an addictive personality with. Like, I did use nicotine a lot. I chewed. I smoked when I was in high school a little bit. But never, like, really developed what I would call an addiction to nicotine. Like, I never really craved it. Um, so That's I'd be crazy curious if I did keep using Zins. There was if definitely I a period of time, I feel like, when the nicotine usage was decently heavy. Like For me? Not necessarily for you. Just, well... I guess I don't know enough to really speak on it. Like, every time we hung out, we were, like, smoking cigs, but, like, we didn't hang out that much. You True. know what I mean? It definitely wasn't for lack of trying that I didn't get addicted to nicotine. I actually, mm -hmm. like, I was such a loser in high school, I wanted to be rebellious, that I was, like, trying to develop a smoking habit, and I just, like, <laughs> I never could. I, That's kind of where it was for me in high school, too, is, like, I wanted it to become more of a regular thing, but uh -huh. I just couldn't get into it until I... I think until I really had, like, it sounds kind of stupid and cheesy, but, like, until I had, like, context to, like, really need some sort of, cr like, craving to be fulfilled. Like, when I started, like, getting out into the real world and getting, like, stressed out, that's when I was like, okay, I just need something that's, like, a small vice. And mm -hmm. then that's when cigarettes started to become, like, a pretty big thing in my life. There was, um, well, still to this day, and it's, it's very situational, I'll crave a cigarette, but it's really just, like, when Every time I crave a cigarette and then I actually smoke one, I feel horrible. Yeah. Actually, so when I when I was in Amsterdam last, people smoked there so much, just in Europe in general. And I was at so many like cafes just drinking coffee and so many people smoking. Yeah. I was like craving a cigarette. It was like what I saw people doing was buying the, the pouches rollies. of tobacco, rolling their own, which I did for that's time in high school too. That's did. what we all we did. We were all hipster, hipster garbage, bro. I know. It tastes so much better it's though. It's much better. Yeah. And like 
you not take that like it's healthy, drags. but I do think there's it something a, to it. Like you know, it's just tobacco you're putting in it. Yeah, totally. And like, if you just smoke like the rice paper rollies, mm-hmm. like then you're not really ingesting like the wax that's on cigarettes and stuff like that. So. Yeah, but boy, can you get a crazy buzz from yeah, those? Yeah, no, two drags, <laughs> two drags, two drags set. Like, Oh my god. Yeah. Which I rediscovered when I was in Amsterdam because I I bought a pouch and. Maybe, like, while I was there, smoked a total of, like, five hand-rolled Did cigarettes. Did Julia ever fuck with cigarettes? No, no, and she's very against it. I figured. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, like, is angry if she ever sees me smoke or use tobacco. Yeah. I did come clean about the Zins, and she's against that as well. I mean, it definitely makes sense to just automatically not be for something like that. Mm-hmm. I think, so... I don't know. For me, like, the cigarette thing is just perplexing because it's a mental game for me. Like, I love the smell of cigarettes. I love, like, holding a cigarette, and I love, like, the inhale and the exhale of a cigarette. Mm. But then when I'm actually smoking... Yeah, exactly. Mm. When I'm actually smoking the cigarette and then starting to feel the side effects of it, it's like, this is not enjoyable. And then when I smoke the vape, it's like... it is enjoyable and i get the buzz but then i don't really get the satisfaction of the handheld shit and like the lighting of the cigarette and the smell of the tobacco like it's a trade-off i did the vape for a little bit when i was in nashville and hated it yeah just never got into it i hated it for the longest time until like probably 2020 like sometime during covid i made the switch to the vape Mm -hmm. and just have been there ever since and i can't go back to cigarettes now um and vaping's not that much fun, so I, yeah, I'm just gonna quit. I think I might, honestly, like if I quit vaping and then I find a way to enjoy a cigarette every now and then, that's probably what's realistically gonna happen. But you know, at least if I'm not vaping, I'm not inhaling all of the man-made harmful chemicals that are in here. I'm at yeah. least just smoking tobacco and stuff. I, I think, and I think Zins are a good thing for that because, like, most of the stuff I see online about them is people are very thankful that it got them off of their smoking or vaping habit and it is you know we don't know the long-term effects it's probably not great for you but i think right now we can all agree it's it's better than inhaling anything and it's probably you know because vaping there are certainly negative health consequences too as well yeah popcorn long what have you yeah just all sorts of i think as of now still unbeknownst side effects to vaping because we're slowly just now discovering like what it's doing to our bodies over a long period of time. Yeah, definitely. Well, anyways, just want to bring that up. Um, I'm going to get rid of my Zins. Do you want them? No. Okay. <laughs> I'll just give them to Put someone them up on, on the Facebook street. marketplace. <laughs> yeah. They're $8. I've used two of them. <laughs> <laughs> they work? They got the math. Oh, that's funny. My, um, Windows chosen background today is a waterfall in Iceland that I went to. <laughs> I have a picture of myself. That's hilarious. From under there. Do you want to see it? Mm-hmm. Oh, the pic, like your picture or the no, the Windows picture, the stock photo, the stock photo. Oh wow, right under that's cool. You went there. I've been places. I've been to Iceland. No big deal. I've been to Iceland. This was my favorite waterfall, actually. I had a layover in Iceland once. Yeah, I know. It's dude. not even. That wasn't even my final destination. You did warn me about the shooters in Iceland at the airport to not do them because you and your friends all got violently sick, <laughs> and I did avoid them. Nice. Did so you see any of that. them? Yeah, I saw what you were talking I, about. I forgot. I have. I have them upstairs still. Oh, I should really? grab them and see if you recognize the labels. But I'll do one right now. I don't care about being sick here. That mm-hmm. is already open shooters from like 2019 <laughs> never mind never mind i won't do them i took like half of one of them and was like nope can't do any more of this but you kept the liquid in them mm-hmm. and you kept the shooter bottle yeah why that's concerning behavior because i've been out of the country like twice one of them for sweden well like i've been to mexico multiple times but like it's just one place you know what i mean mm-hmm. so like mexico and sweden those are the two places like really out of the country that i've been to so it's a souvenir so it's just like yeah my one souvenir from that trip besides i mean i don't really think i brought anything else back from sweden with me i brought like a single pair of Winsent drumsticks which are like the swedish drumsticks that they have they're great Swedish drumsticks um but i broke both of them Swedish feeder. So, yeah, go ahead and just reduce an entire culture down to one 
laughable. I'm pretty sure you were the one who said Herg and Jurgen last night. So don't talk but I've grown to me a lot about since being offensive. Then. I've so matured I'm, since then. I'm a bigger, better person now. I, it's coming across. People that I'm can bigger? Tell. People can tell that I'm bigger? That you're better. Oh. Stronger. Oh. Faster. Longer. Hornier. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, what are we doing here? Last week was 4th of July. It's this week. but you know, we're, America. We're playing. We're pretending we're the... Oh, God bless America. America. From semen to shining. shining. Come. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried that might be what you said. <laughs> um, yeah. So I hope everyone had a... Did you see the thing about the presidential immunity? today oh i saw that you shared it on your story yeah so what are the the supreme court is I saying mean, essentially that, is it overruling his felony charges essentially no um because those like the current felony charges happened when he was outside of office they just granted him a full immunity essentially for official acts as president so anything that happened that he did that could possibly be considered illegal when he was well, he president. He gets immunity for. That's and a people dangerous are saying, precedent to people, set. Yeah, people are saying it like it's just Trump that gets that, but like oh, it's, it's all. It's not just like a one president thing. It, it is the precedent now for like our politics. So like, the I mean, all the Republicans the don't realize Biden could go fucking. Biden Biden could literally just have Trump arrested for no reason. He should start smoking crack too. And then like nothing would happen. Like that's fine. So it's definitely a double-edged sword. I don't want this to become political at all. But uh I don't I either. Just had to mention that cuz it's fucking crazy. I'm going to ask you this and we Yes, I don't. am gay. <laughs> all right, that was established earlier. Thank you. <laughs> There's a precedent for that I'm as well. I'm also bi. <laughs> <laughs> Bipartisan? Bipolar. <laughs> Um, I don't want to talk about this at all, but I'm just going to ask you a question. Did mm -hmm. you watch the debate? No. Okay. I watched okay. like a little, couple little highlight bits, but no, I didn't watch the whole thing or really even, I didn't really even read about it afterwards too much. I just read pretty much everyone said Biden lost, but it honestly feels like we're all losing. Indeed. <sighs> yeah. Did you watch it? I watched it, which is out the of character thing? for me. The whole thing. Holy shit, that is out of character yeah. for you. For some reason, it was just something I felt like doing. You needed like, this to is do a it. Because you're still occasion. kind of on the fence, right? You're like, I. There's a lot of pros to voting for Trump. I watched it purely to decide who to vote for. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why you watch debates. That's exactly. It's not to reaffirm the things that you and already let me are say, choosing both to believe. Both guys had a lot of good points. I think mm -hmm. I'm still on good the fence. Good people on both sides. Good people on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was a nightmare. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. And, like, you wouldn't really vote for Biden either if you had a choice. Like, No, but I don't have a choice. Nobody wants to vote for either of these people. Like, why are they... That's the thing that I take away from it is, like, why are we pretending like we only have two choices? There's 317 million people in this country, and, like, at least half of them are adults. You and I should like, run. I'll be the Republican. I'll be the independent. You'll be independent. I don't want to associate with a party. We'll get, we'll, we'll get Benson up there to be the, the Democrat. I want to be like RFK. I'm just going to put a worm up my nose and hope <laughs> that it makes it into my brain. And just talk in a mess up. And Dude. then I'll start talking like this. Oh my God, I have big, uh, a big story. I don't think I ever mentioned. Hmm. I saw RFK in person. Where? <laughs> this is funny. In Iceland? Mm -mm. Under the waterfall? In Aurora, Colorado. Oh, shit. Um, there's a restaurant, like marketplace, open air marketplace thing. That has a beer hall. He was getting a brew? No. Oh. He was holding a rally there. Mm. But um, I got there and there were like RFK people everywhere with clipboards wanting you to sign How stuff. How many? Like 20? 20. Mm -hmm. Sounds um, right. And I was like, oh, there's like RFK stuff going on here. We go to a restaurant, sit on the patio. The patio of the restaurant is facing the back entrance for the beer hall. And um, we see like more and more RFK stuff going on. And somehow we eventually deduce that there's like going to be a rally happening. And we're like, do you think RFK is actually showing up? Right as we're saying that, a black SUV peels around the corner, pulls right up to the 
um, rear of the to the entrance of the beer hall, and out pops RFK like <laughs> fifteen feet from me. I could like Whoa. clearly see him. He goes into the beer hall, and all of a sudden, it's just like a, a absolute ruckus. People applaud, applauding, and if you would have known that he was coming, and you would have had something prepared to shout, what would it have been like along the lines of? Where's Cheryl? <laughs> I love Cheryl Hines. Oh, his wife. Man. Um, <coughs> but then the uh, of course you're only in it for the pop culture. A bunch, yeah. A bunch of uh, Biden protesters and protesters for Biden showed up to protest RFK. Why? That's exact. I was like, you fucking losers! Like, yeah, you have not, nothing you're better not to do doing than it. protest someone else's was, campaign it, rallies. None of them were. The dude has like one percent. I know. It's like just let him do his thing. Yeah, guys. literally, you go guys home. have families. Yeah, or I mean, at least you have like probably sex pillows or something. None of them were below the age of sixty. Um, God, they were all fucking losers. They were dude. like the perfect like if a right wing person was to draw a caricature of a Biden supporter, it was this group of people exactly. I mean, you could take out Biden from the equation and just drop in any other. Any, yeah, like, just let him be. <laughs> fucking yeah and also like just let democracy unfold like yeah people are allowed to hold campaigns you don't have to yeah. show up and you don't have to just poo poo someone else's opinion like yeah he's an independent he's not a threat like yeah if you are showing up to counter protests like a trump rally like i kind of get that because like that dude's a convicted felon but like rfk is not a threat to democrats at all like he's not a threat to anybody except for the fucking worm in his brain yeah that and that's what they showed up with pool noodles that were supposed to represent brain worms <laughs> and were yelling, "Let's go, brain They're worms!" They're really just going down to the lowest. They really possible. are. I'm like, is that your strategy, Biden protesters? You're going to question his cognitive function? Yeah, whatever happens, like worms? when they go low, we go high, or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. exactly. That's crazy. I know that. I was like, you guys are just embarrassing yourself. Yeah, even. more than RFK. <clears throat> because the thing with that is like nobody even likes joe biden that much like he's just the guy that we decided was the only guy that could beat trump back in 2016 and now we're fucking stuck with him but like if he died and then we just picked some other institutional democrat to fucking take his place like everyone would just fucking buy new signs on the internet and pretend that the whole biden thing never happened like now we've done what we said when we were kids and Obama was president, like, people actually liked him. Like, mm. people were like, I'm proud that he's my president. And even, like, Bush, like, even though Bush was a shitty fucking president, like, people still were, like, proud to be like, I am glad that he's the man that we chose. But now it's just like, we have this dude as president literally because he was our last fucking resort. Like, the only guy that could get enough Democrats to vote for a Democrat. It's if, pathetic. If Obama ran again, it'd be a landslide win by him mm -hmm. but anyways we did exactly what we said we weren't gonna do we got political yeah hardly hardly we're just talking objectively about what's going on yeah the the hard truths and that's what we will come to this podcast for mm -hmm. the hard truths of american politics yes um speaking of american politics hope everyone had a good fourth of july yes that's what we were originally gonna and say we were, yep um we are recording this the week of fourth of july Fourth of July is this coming Thursday for us. Yet. It hasn't happened yet. Damn, you really like to just let people know exactly when these things I've are happening, said, dude. I've told you, people like to see behind the scenes. But they don't. They there needs to be a little bit of baseball. mystique. Like, oh my gosh, is this new? When did they record this? Like, what do they look like now? Did Colin get a haircut since this was filmed? Like, I did get a haircut since last week. <clears throat> Thank you for noticing. But not since this was filmed. Not since we started this episode. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pause and get a haircut, if that's what you're insinuating. I think that would be good content. That would be funny. If I just <laughs> the camera cuts like, to you and then back to me. And I have He's a totally to different Colin's haircut. Hair. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great idea. Get podcast while we're getting our haircut. Mm -hmm. mm, I wonder if anyone's ever done that. Dude, honestly, we should take the pot on the road. Like, sometime we should go to, like, a show and, like, you know, like... I've had that idea. You're talking like, you two to me, go, where they're like, "We're behind the scenes," but yeah. then they're actually, we can't get behind the scenes anywhere. So, well, we could do it at one of our own shows, like from the green room, record a pod. We're behind the scenes at we're the Capitol show. At our own show. The next thing that's gonna happen, Colin's gonna take his pants off. Woo! <laughs> and then Julian's gonna take his pants off. <laughs> and then Will and then is probably gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> and there he goes. Um, 
It's uh, July 1st. Monday, <laughs> July 1st. At the time we're recording this. And um, yeah, I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. I hope we have a good 4th of July when it happens three days from now. Correct mundo. But fireworks. You know, Julian, I don't think I'm alone this in this. When I think of Fourth of July, I think of the um, Eagles, America, or just the band America. Oh, I think of MIA, which is weird because she's not from she's here. She's not from here. Yeah. What, do you do you actually think of her? No. Oh. So you just lied mm-hmm. compulsively for, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and that got me thinking. You know, America. Is a good band from America. The band is a good band from. The band America is a good band from. America. No, but like the band is a good. Oh, band. Oh, the band, yes, is a good band from. Like the UK, I think. <laughs> Canada slash America. Some okay. members were Canadian. <clears throat> I'll take that. Or at least one member was. Um, All of the non-gropers in Arcade Fire are American. Is it only Win Butler from Quebec? I thought well, they were all his, from Montreal. His, uh, no, he's from America and his wife's from Canada. I thought he was Quebecois. No, I think he's American. I know he doesn't have like a French Canadian accent, but I thought maybe he was like one of the. Yeah, well, only one we're way to know. We're super derailed. I'm trying to introduce the topic today. Okay, what are we talking about? <laughs> we're going to discuss great American bands. You and I were involved in a different podcast in another life. And on that podcast, we once had an episode where we debated the best American band of all time. Now, Butler was born in California, bitch. But the rest of the band is from Canada? Is that what you're saying? Why did you even bring this up? <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. All right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do any um, digging into this to rewatch that old podcast episode we did. I don't remember who we actually declared as the best American band of all time. It's not I even think the same it was podcast the that we're doing now. It's no, it's a, a different, different podcast. podcast. Yeah. But um, I remember we had, I created for us pretty strict guidelines for it that discussion. It was a discussion. Zoom podcast. It was a Zoom podcast. All right. Let it go. I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I had <clears throat> strict guidelines criteria for determining who the best American band was at that time. Did I seem I really bored for the majority of that episode? You seemed really bored, and I remember you kept just recommending bullshit bands at the end of it, just bands that you like. <laughs> like that clearly doesn't fit in with the criteria, Julian. <laughs> the criteria was like, um, they have to have like hit songs. like They have to have number one singles. They have to have staying power, like still relevant today. <clears throat> they had to have... Um, like distinguishable members of the band, you know, like oh, I that I kind of remember that. That's yeah. fucking stupid, bro. No, I don't think that's stupid because that's it's to stupid. me what part of like a, a great band is like people know the members of the band and each one kind of has their own personality that's and character and brings stupid, their own thing bro. to it. No, it's not. <laughs> I, that's, people, a band is more than the music they create. A band is nah. attitude. A lot it's of the character. bands that I really like, I know almost nothing about. Yeah, but you have bullshit taste in music. I think that only half of it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the non-half of it is good bands, where people know the band members. Nah. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, to be a legendary it's, band. No, I get it. I Yeah, no, I understand. It becomes really hard to, like, boil it down to a list of bands where, like, each member was known and, like, a personality. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Because even some of the most popular bands in the world, like, you only know the front man. Yeah. Or, like, sometimes you know, like, True. the guitarist. But I think that's but, enough where it's, like, one distinguishable mem- member of the band. You said each member has to be distinguished. Okay, well, I go back on that. Okay. I think I maybe had different rules for that part of this episode. But, uh... I just want you to know so, that you misspoke, though. All right, and it, it was my bad. It led me bad. down my right. You're path totally of anger. justified path of anger. Yes, that was totally worth the time we spent on it. That is me getting a pass, everybody. I'm editing all this out. <laughs> <laughs> Complete editorial control. Welcome to podcast, though. Oh, oh, I forgot. Welcome to podcast, though. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Oh, what an unmitigated disaster this is. So what's the cr- the criteria for this today? 
I think we can be a little bit more open about it. I mean, we don't have to have the same structured debate we had last time. So we're talking um, about... I think we should rule out solo band or solo acts, so no Bob Dylans, even like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. We I didn't think include we hip-hop groups last time, did we? I don't think so. It was just rock bands. So yeah, we can include hip-hop groups. Okay. Um, and yeah, we don't have like uh, we don't have to leave this episode with a clear winner. I think no, it's just fun to kind of debate who are some here. of the great yeah. American artists are. If everything and people lose whenever we mention them, so true. True. Um, the only thing I wanted to say about it before we kind of get into it more is like, so they have to be American. They have to be pretty famous and. Otherwise influential. They have to be like, if if you stopped a random person on the street, they would know that band. They would know the name of the band. They would recognize songs from it. Yeah, I know a member. Okay. So then the other, I guess, criteria is as far as staying power, like, is there a cutoff for a year? Because like some really good American bands these days, in my opinion, are like less than a decade old. So it's a little hard to know if they have staying power. I feel like last time most of our bands were from yeah, the from, 60s from through the, the 80s century. because yeah, like that's really the only age when you can tell if something has staying power or not. I don't think we can. And I'd be interested to hear that if you think anyone from this has potential millennium. Yeah, it has potential to be the best American band of all time. So let the debate begin. I think last time we, or it's not a debate, it's an open discussion. Whatever. Yeah. And I, think, I, I think last time we said the Eagles won. And last time we also had like notes and we all prepared beforehand mm-hmm. yeah. and we like had spiels about all the albums not this or time. the it's, artists. It's off the cuff. This time it's random. So. And that shows how objective <laughs> we were being. We said the Eagles won. <laughs> and you and I, as discussed we in the recent the episode, both hate eagles connor got on us for calling them the eagles even though everyone in fucking america calls them and if i couldn't <clears throat> if i could just say like i'm pretty sure we picked the eagles or you picked the eagles eagles fuck you connor because <laughs> <laughs> um we really at the end of the day we're looking at like the most billboard hits and like number one albums or like certified platinum singles or something like that. Like it really boiled down to being statistically. I remember another piece of criteria that I had was like, they have to be uniquely American, which was pretentious. Yeah. And like have an American identity. Yeah. Like, cause there's so many American bands that you could easily confuse as, as British bands. For example, the killers, fantastic American band, but they're always like, um, identified as being like everyone thinks the Killers are a British band and they're here huge in the UK because they have like a, a British sound. So I love the Killers. I do think they're probably or definitely one of the best American bands of all time, uh, and certainly have staying power. And that's uh, that's a band from this millennium. But yeah, they're not like necessarily like Ameri- <clears throat> like uniquely American. I mean, but they are from Vegas actually, they which kind makes of them. Are. They just sounded yeah. like the two thousands like Brit pop kind of thing that was going on but honestly that was kind of tied into like the new wave not new wave like the 90s turn of the decade like new indie thing that was going on so like the second wave of Britpop kind of like they yeah yeah, it all played off of yeah everything played off of each other yeah Um, I want to bring this up and see if your opinion has changed on this at all because I remember the first time we did this, I was riding pretty hard for the Doors being the best American band of all time. And I think there's still part of me that thinks that, that the Doors really are the best American band of all time. Fuck the Doors. I know you don't like the Doors. So are you Fuck unwilling to, to budge on that? Fuck the so Doors. So they don't deserve. Why do you hate the Doors so much? It's mostly just Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. I don't like Jim Morrison. I don't like he's one of those people where it's like everyone's just like he's so pro- prolific he's so talented and i'm just like he literally sounds like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing he literally sounds strung out all the time he I, sounds I disagree with you. cool i'm wrong <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um no i i mean i i try to understand and i try to un, I, like i try to pretend like i get where people are coming from with that i just don't like <clears throat> the doors aren't good they're repetitive. They're boring. Um, hmm. Yeah, the Jim Morrison's just like a phony and a fucking hack. And uh, 
they get overrated so much all the time, in my opinion. I, I, d- I think Jim Morrison is definitely not a great person to idolize and to use this word was problematic in the lens of history. I don't think he was a phony. I think he was a legitimate tortured soul messiah for the countercultural movement. I think, <clears throat> you know, he most certainly lived the life, lived fast, die young, did, you know, what he talked about, explored the boundaries of consciousness in his mind, paid the price for it, made some great music in, in the interim. Yeah, sure. But that was then. And like and this is now door songs absolutely. And now the doors sound cook. old and outdated and not relevant, and like a bunch of other shit from back then around the same time sounds kind of still current. And doors relevant. get sampled in some amazing just because they get sam. Oh, cool! So does like fucking a bunch of other really shitty music. <laughs> Name one. Name bad songs that are sampled <laughs> yeah. in hip hop. Name one. Dude, oh my god, um. I can't right now, <laughs> honestly. Sorry, that was such a douche. <laughs> oh, yeah, name one. <laughs> but there's definitely countless examples of bad songs or even just, yeah, like two seconds of a bad song being taken and looped. Well, we but, can move on. I love <laughs> The Doors. I think they deserve mention for sure. For what I, Yeah, for whatever reason, zeitgeist-wise, they're still super popular, and they always have... Like, every 10 years, there's, like, a moment where Jim they Morrison do. becomes, Yeah, like, Jim Morrison comes back yeah. every... So, yeah. I get why... I get it, like, why people always bring it back around in the conversation. It's just one of those things where it's, like, people always say it's great, and then I feel like I just want to ask why, and then if I did actually ask why, no one would actually have an answer. Like, people just say it's great because everyone else always said it was great. But well, did I answer the question why they're great? No. <sighs> what do you need to hear? Like you said the same thing that everyone else always fucking says about them. Well, I just have don't great hear when songs I was... and then Jim Morrison is a yeah. charismatic frontman. When I listen to them, I don't think their songs are good, and I don't think Jim Morrison sounds you charismatic. Don't bop along What's to charis- Riders on the Storm. No, God, Peace. I fucking hate that song. Peace Frog. <clears throat> Peace Frog is great. Nope, bad song. I think the biggest what. I've heard as a critique of the Doors, which I think has some virtue, is that they don't have a bass player, so never really cook as much as they could. Um, what's his name? The keyboardist, uh, Ray Manzarek. Ray Manzarek does a great job filling in some of the rhythm, and you know does some low end stuff that kind of replaces the bass. But I think a lot of Doors songs, especially like the earlier ones, would be better with the bass player on them. Maybe. Anyways, that we, would definitely help a bit, I guess, with, yeah, like, making it feel like it's being pushed forward. But that still wouldn't make up for what, in my opinion, is just Jim Morrison's lack of persona as a front man. <clears throat> Fair enough. His singing is just so... And I like, I like melancholy singers. Like, some of the most melancholic singers are some of my favorite. But with him, it's just always, like, so much in the same register and occupying, like, the same headspace and really not going anywhere, that it's just, like, boring as fuck for me to listen to. I've, in terms of front men, though, he is, like, the He's a prolific prototype for a because rock of star. What, yeah, because of what he did on the side, like, because of but what his, his personal life was like. to the leather but that pants, was also the because swagger. Of, I mean, I think that was all more... I don't know, like, people back then were more personified, I guess. Like, front men were more personified. So, like, however he may have acted in his personal life, like, carried into his onstage persona and was, like, obviously played up a lot more on stage than it probably would have been off stage. But, like, it was always, like, his... His... How he was outside of the band, like was personified then in who he was in the band as well. And, like, I don't think... I just don't think there was that much actual, like, really interesting shit going on. It was just, like, he was a chaotic person to be around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, like, everybody back then. Like, so many, like, musicians and famous bands were more focused on, like, being a big persona 
and like being influential than they were really concerned about like moving their craft forward. And I'm not saying that about the doors at all, but that it was just like the attitude of the time was like to be famous, you really had to have like a full time persona going on outside of whatever music you might have been doing. And yeah. like they just became super intertwined at a certain point for like everybody. And that was just like I think that's just something that doesn't really happen as much anymore because there's like a lot more famous people and you not like we've talked about in the past, the whole American culture isn't like unified behind one band where like back in the day, like a huge chunk of the culture was like behind only a few really famous bands. And so Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just one of those things where I think a lot of the personas just like super played up and like the lines are like mixed more, but I don't know. Fair enough. Um, I remember the other band that, was very prevalent in the last discussion was Metallica. <laughs> they were up there, <laughs> which I think is very mm-hmm. legitimate. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a band we both like. Yes. And they're a band that continues to be obviously relevant for better or for worse. Like they put out an album, what, last year? 72 seasons? Uh, or was that 2022? Um, Either I think way, that was last year. They put out an album somewhat recently, and now they're doing like a. They're still on like the same global tour for it. They still sound, even if their shit isn't like the best, they still sound interested in what they're doing, and they're still like trying to push their craft forward. And they have like a metric fuckload of albums. So yeah, yeah. I wanna. This is a band that I've been listening to a little bit recently, and I. Uh, started to read one of the members autobiography Aerosmith <laughs> okay I started to read Joe Perry's uh, biography um, I bet Aerosmith was at least mentioned last time but we never really talked about them what do you think of Aerosmith um, Aerosmith is alright it's not they're not my absolute favorite but they definitely deserve to be mentioned as far as like institutional institutional american bands Mm -hmm. i uh, they have amazing songs amazing records my dad is a huge aerosmith fan like i remember he was obsessed with like aerosmith riffs that was like a lot of my early guitar lessons was learning aerosmith riffs i think joe perry is a, a great guitar player and yeah like i said they made some really remarkable records in the 70s and 80s but i just feel like they for whatever reason, compared to other bands, have been kind of like brushed over by the sands of time and and don't really have as much of a like place in rock as like other classic rock bands do. Yeah, I guess probably just because they knew more so when to like call it quits. Yeah, well, they were still making music into the the 90s. Yeah. I don't know if they've released any records. I don't think there's been any... Thing. In the last couple of decades, yeah, but they've done like performances and stuff, and yeah, but that's I think still different than trying to release new music well after you're arguably have peaked in your career. Uh-huh. I don't know. I think it definitely helps a little bit that there's like still a little bit of like mystique and um, composure behind the Aerosmith world, whereas like I mean, there's not too many old, super old. American bands playing right now that are like shitting the bed, I guess. But there's definitely just older bands in general where it's like you guys should have stopped writing albums like 20 years ago and you should do a reunion show like once every five years and then call it a fucking day. Yeah. Um, let's so I guess like when I think of American bands, it's easy to forget how many truly great American bands there are. I kind of think, what, you you disagree? Uh, Can I throw one into the mix really quick? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Just because since you said you've kind of been listening to Aerosmith lately, the band that I've been listening to a lot lately that we've definitely talked about, but like, I guess maybe they're not the greatest American band in the world, but I think they're probably the most underrated American band right now. Like, I think they deserve... Even though they get a lot of praise, they still deserve more than they get. I think Soundgarden should be mentioned because, like, oh, totally. There's literally not a single 
bad Soundgarden song. Just talking about like a songwriting perspective, every single Soundgarden song that has ever been released fucking rips. Like, there's so much talent and innovation in that world that just seems to not really get too discussed. Even though Chris Cornell is like definitely idolized still and shit. <clears throat> we definitely talked about Soundgarden last time, and like what's. Uh, what I was just about to say before you interjected I interrupted with it. You. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> it's like, it's really in American particular, like once you start to think about all the musical movements that have happened, that's like when all these great bands come up, like for example, like classic rock, 60s, like all that stuff into like the Southern rock thing into yacht rock. Um, I feel like outside of like hair bands and metal, there was kind of a lack of like really good bands coming out in the 80s. But then obviously in the 90s, like the next big movement you have is grunge, where that's really interesting because I feel like any of the big grunge bands could easily be named top five like American bands of all time. Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana, obviously. Yeah. Even Alice in Chains. The, even Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, like literally yeah. on this list, I can't remember... Uh, ultimateclassicrock.com I just pulled up their list because I wanted to get get in the right headspace for this episode and like I, they're a little bit further down on the list but they're on the list and like I don't actually I didn't see Nirvana on this list but so far like Soundgarden and Stone Temple Pilots have I'm looking through the same list. thing that's wild if Nirvana is oh Nirvana is it's uh 14 okay yeah 14. I haven't gotten that high up um but yeah so anyway like grunge was huge and I honestly think the longer time goes on the more it really starts to seem and feel like the 90s was like America's peak mm -hmm. like we Probably I actually was, peaked in like the seventies, but culturally we peaked in the nineties when like everything was a movement, like a full on movement. There was mm -hmm. enough, there was like enough modern technology to really get information out relatively, relatively quickly and like get people on the page, at, like people on the same page at like around the same time. It wasn't to the point where like everything was instant and there weren't like there wasn't an oversaturation of famous people yet in the 90s, so people were always unified by, like, the same few famous people. And everyone was a huge personality back then, like Kurt Cobain, even, like, Dave Grohl. Like, when's the last time that a drummer of a band has been, like, such a big fucking deal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just big personalities like that don't happen as much anymore in culture. So I guess it's, like, we look back on that the most fondly. Definitely. I uh, Let me go back on what I said just a second ago about the 80s. There are obviously a ton of great like sure. indie, indie bands that came out of the 80s. I'm just saying like we didn't have the same like New Wave, for example, didn't really seem to have the same impact it did on the U.S. as it did in the U.K. I feel like the U.K. really dominated when it came to like indie alternative new wave music we obviously had like great bands like rem forming we had a lot of cool like the the replacements and Hus husker du and um pavement and bands like that i think pavement started in the 80s prevalent, think, yeah. prevalent in the 90s um but anyways sorry just wanted to, to no, ed edit good. myself there i think you you're right in the sense that like in the 80s there was still like a division of kind of a division of genre where like you either were like the new wave guy or you were like the hair guy or you liked i don't know whatever the fuck else was going on in the 80s yeah. those are like the two main things though and if you liked hair then you hated new wave and if you liked new wave then you hated hair and then like in the 90s grunge was just like such a strong force that it was literally global like it it defied the boundary of like you know domain mm -hmm. it didn't sound it, I mean, it sounded super American, obviously. Like, it didn't sound European by any means. But it also didn't, like, pigeonhole itself into being, like, American only. Like, it was universally accessible. So, and it was, I think, not the first moment in American history where we set, like, the cultural standard for a period of years. But it was, like probably the most recent one where we were just like hey everyone like this is what people are gonna like for a while and then like Soundgarden comes along and they're like grungy 
and progressive. They sound kind of indie. They have sad songs. They have bangers. Like they're a mix of kind of a big amalgamation of everything that happened in like the late eighties, early nineties. And I like rode the coattails of like what Steely Dan kind of left off on. And like, it was just more progressive and more like intricate, but also like super angry and grungy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, and just Chris Cornell as a dude and like Mm -hmm. audio slave after that. And all the Chris Cornell solo stuff, I think easily one of the most important American musicians of all time. 100%. Hands down. Um, Something I wanted to bring up real quick too, that we, the first time we had this discussion on the other pod, we kind of ignored this because most of the people that came from this movement were solo artists and not groups, but Motown. Yeah. uh, I mean, like, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say like the Temptations. Temptations, the the Supremes, Ronettes. Um, and just like outside of the, the amazing music that came out of Motown, but like, I, it doesn't really get more uniquely American than Motown does. Like truly starting a industry of banger singles Mm -hmm. out of like, you know, out of Detroit, Michigan and starting like a cultural movement that, and kind of obviously not not like fixing racism but like bringing together cultures a bit more like Motown was huge Mm -hmm. in kind of uniting African culture and the super white culture (laughs) together and then obviously like white people kind of stole all the good parts of what was happening in the Motown movement and then turned that into what would become rock and roll and obviously like African Americans helped kind of with that transition as well but I think Motown is like kind of what we just said about the nineties and global influence. Like Motown was the, that global influence of the fifties where it was just like, it was so modern and new of an idea that everyone latched onto it right away. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll wrap this up soon, but curious, I guess just to kind of put some better boundaries on this. And since we didn't mention any of these bands last time we talked about this, if you did have to pick a band from the 2000s, from from this millennium, to represent America as the best American band of all time, who would you pick? The best American band of all time or just the best American band of the 2000s? Well, okay, not necessarily. Yeah, best American band of the 2000s, who you would feel comfortable putting up as a contender for the best American band of all time? Um, people who started releasing music past the year 1999. I mean, this sounds really fucking stupid off the bat, but I'm gonna throw the Black Keys out there. I don't think that's stupid. Because they were huge for years and years. Like, late 2000s all the way into the 2010s, and even still now, they're obviously Mm -hmm. releasing music. It's not as global as it was but it still is pretty global and like the hype behind like the brothers releases like all the singles lonely boy tighten up or mm-hmm. sorry not gold lonely boy, on the uh, but like tighten up gold on the ceiling there was another one another single that was huge from that album too um i think gold on the ceiling was brothers right was that uh, gold on the ceiling was el camino i think oh, okay. but no matter what the case they have you know a lot of gold Certified singles, platinum singles, all that shit. They've been super universal, um, and they've stayed around for a minute. So I would, they come to mind. They wouldn't be my final answer, but I think they'd be an honorable mention. And Howlin' for you. Howlin' for you, that's the one. And Tighten Up. That's a good record. Um, And then, obviously, it's fresh in my mind because we've talked about it recently, but I would probably throw Queens of the Stone Age in there as a contender because, again, they just... They just don't miss like Mm -hmm. talking about out bands with lengthy discographies that are just solid through and through like Queens of the Stone Age definitely is one of those bands. I would say Foo Fighters probably should be mentioned as well, even though they did start like 1998, like they didn't peak until the 2000s in popularity. Um, So there's three off the bat that kind of come to my mind. And then like, obviously we can't really mention Jack White because he's a solo artist, but the White Stripes should be in there as well because 
the White Stripes did reform rock and roll and they brought the garage scene to the forefront and they I think still continue to be incredibly relevant like even like they're one of those bands where as they get older and as time passes by more they become more iconic like people are just now starting to really realize that hey Meg White actually was kind of a fucking genius like she wasn't bad she at wasn't all bad at like, drums, people yeah. gave her shit for 20 years and now they're like oh she actually was exactly right for that band. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think they're one of them. They're an honorable mention as well. So what do, what do you got? <sighs> I agree with everything you listed. I think Foo Fighters would be the, like, yes, they did start in the nineties. I think they'd be the obvious pick for most people. I like black. I wasn't thinking black keys, but I think that's a very strong case to make. I'm just trying to think of like, who are the bands that are the biggest bands around today? They're definitely, two of them Foo Fighters undoubtedly Foo Fighters might be the biggest band in the world by like some rock metrics. band conventionally yeah. speaking probably um I was gonna bring up The National that's good I just don't think they're necessarily as they're definitely they gonna, don't have the hits or the mainstream yeah ness of Foo Fighters or Black Keys even mm-hmm. but when you think about like some of the biggest bands in the world, like the national still touring, still doing They're massive tours. They're definitely acclaimed by their group. Acclaimed, like they have a fan selling base. records. Sure. We'll see if it's, if it sticks around, like if 40 years from now, there's still diehard national fans, but I, I don't think that there won't be by any means. I know you're going to hate this answer, but the strokes, the strokes. Yeah. I definitely understand why they should be mentioned, especially mm. because they came on like in 2000 and they were just like there ever since, and yeah. they really did in the same way that White Stripes like reformed garage rock and brought it to the forefront. They reformed they indie and brought right it along, to the yeah. forefront. The, yeah, it's it, like it was such a cultural shift, and like it, people say, like Nirvana was the last rock revolution. I kind of think the Strokes were the last rock revolution. Um. But yeah, they're really the only... I was trying to think of like other 2000s indie bands. I, the Strokes are the only ones I would like comfortably position. They're like, I like Interpol more than The Strokes, but I wouldn't say Interpol is like the greatest <laughs> American band of all time. I do think Interpol would be in my top five. Yeah, but I get like no mainstreamness to them. Oh, are you kidding me, bro? They are gigantic even still like that's the thing that and i joe like, schmo I get off it, the like, street will have, have probably never heard an interpol song they've well, heard last night though it, well no i think they probably heard obstacle one or it was like, on, like cool rock stations but like it was on the radio a lot in the 2000s yeah, maybe. i don't know like i with interpol specifically it's like okay i saw them in mission ballroom sold out show it was hands down the most professional, just awe factor show I've ever been to. Like every single second was dialed the fuck in. Yeah, they're a great band. And like again, I just like they're not. But that's the thing. Like they're a great ba- like this. They're the same as the National. They're a great. They're like the best band to like their demographic. Like they have a huge, huge fan base that to them is like yeah the best. Yeah. No. I- I, I feel like the national has a bigger fan base. I'm just I'm part of what is influencing that is like my parents and my parents' friends love the national, and to me that's a sign of like fuck these guys are big. Like that's just people the who national never is cared about sad dads, bro. It, it is sad dads, but now Interpol is technically sad dads. They're not sad dads. They're like still edgy. They are. Like they're they're, pretty, they're cool as fuck. You're right. Yeah. I, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. Um. Yeah. The National has the appeal to like moms and dads and elderly people because the lyrics are like s- not elderly people. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, elderly people. But, but yeah, older the older demographic fucks with the National because there is like a candidness and a realness behind the lyrics and shit that they can connect to and relate to, and that's not necessarily there for like Interpol. But then when you go to an Interpol show, it's like, dude, I was there with Kelsey and like. I thought for sure, like, we're definitely going to be some of the youngest people here. There's a lot of people there that were, like, five, ten years younger than me. They were, like, straight-up kids there, you know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, 
that reach goes on and on. And at the national show that I went to, it was like old haired silver fucks. Like, I don't know. True. <laughs> no, I was, I like Interpol more than black yeah. or more than national and strokes. I was, you know, just no, objectively, I, but no, I, I you, you've swayed me. Devil's swayed advocate me. approach. Yeah. I just think, yeah, you swayed me when you like, if you ever saw Interpol play in like Central America, like Brazil or something, there's like, Oh, tens of thousands of people off. that go yeah. there to see them. Not to say that that wouldn't happen for the national too, but it, I think it would happen less for the national. Um, but then if you went to like fucking a castle in Glasgow, the national would fucking sell that shit out probably in an instant. So there's give and take everywhere there. Um, I think another kind of along the same lines, American band that we should mention, maybe some vampire weekend. <laughs> Because again, I purposefully did not. But if we're talking just bands, American bands from the early two thousands that haven't really missed, other than Father of the Bride, they haven't really missed, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, true. They're they're someone I would throw up there. Definitely staying power. They're still touring. One yeah. of the largest touring acts today. Um, Hmm. there's a lot of bands that i think are like the best american bands but they're not famous you know what i mean so yeah for sure and we'll leave those off mm -hmm. don't even mention them i'm not i'm not <laughs> all right let's wrap this up this might be fun who is the worst or most embarrassing american band of all time who, who is the worst ambassador musically for our great country of america um what comes to mind off the bat is Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> Interesting. He is South African, though. Was he born in South Africa? I think so. Oh, well, never mind then. He might. Wait, let me look this up. But he is. You, I'm. I'm splitting hairs there. He is pretty uniquely American. Uh, dude, I typed in Dave America. <laughs> so Dave, Dave Matthews. Um. Who else? Birth. Uniquely place. horrible. The 1975 yeah, is pretty bad. Yeah, he was born in... They're British. Oh, they are? No, uh -huh. they're very British. Uh -huh. Dave Matthews was born in Johannesburg, Wait, the South Africa. Is Matty Healy is British. Matty Healy is British. They're all British? They're all British. British. Yeah. Oh, okay. All British. Damn. Um, well, then, fuck. Imagine Dragons is pretty bad. I think the... I think the obvious answers, or what came to mind for me, is Nickelback. But I've mentioned before, I think that's undeserved, but I think that's what a lot of people would say. <laughs> Imagine Dragons, I agree with you on. And then any of like the new metal bands, Limp Bizkit. Not uh, System of a Down, though. Not System of a Down. They're on the tasteful edge of, of new metal. Um uh Limp Bizkit uh Corn Have you ever seen like Limp Bizkit live though? Like have you ever watched yeah, the video? Yeah, I have. It's, and it goes, goes hard pretty and hard us live. does Corn. Us does Corn. And I yeah. I like some songs by those bands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think really all of the worst American bands kind of still in a weird way still sound like new enough and modern enough to like not sound as horrible as I don't know it's weird like s some good old shit sounds worse than bad new shit sometimes you know what I mean mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure just because everything nowadays sounds so shiny and crispy and it's easy to listen to so it can sound good even if it's bad yeah Um. but yeah I don't know probably Nickelback I guess as unfair as that is I think most people would agree with you that they are the the worst ambassadors for American music. <laughs> Poor Chad. Poor Chad. All right. Well, in the interest of time, our time, not the listeners' We got time, shit to do. We got shit to do. Thanks for listening. Um, if you have your own thoughts on American bands, please drop it in the Feel comments. Feel free to suck me. Or do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.